Okay, so continue on to part two of your topic five, the sanitation and sewerage. So in the first part, we learn of the introduction of your this topic of sanitary and sewerage on why what's the origin of the sanitary and sewerage. So the origin comes from civilization. Then after that, by knowing why we require this sewerage to be available to us. So we know about the terminology and then the sanitary work breakdown. So the process is pretty simple. It starts with the collection from us. And then after that, we are to collect it to the sewage treatment plant. We treat it and then we dispose of it. So any of any sub building services and for this case, which is sanitary and sewerage, there is the act and regulation for you guys to for everyone to follow. So UBBL nineteen eighty four is a universal is a universal building by law. So this is very important lah. So if you go to construction life, then this is a law that everyone have to obey. So local municipal council regulation differ from places to places lah. But the this act UBBL. 1984 is universal in Malaysia. Lah. Everyone will have to follow it. And then also IWK design. Lah. So this design will be mostly on the sewage treatment plant, the process of the treatment. Lah. So for this. And then we have our indoor sanitary system. So if you notice in your assignment, I will go through it again later lah, in detail. So in your assignment, it stated that you need to do sanitary system, uh, san sanitary system indoor. So sanitary system will include this sort of thing. You have your uh, inlet for your wastewater, which can be, which can be from your WC basin, and then you need to identify what sort of WC you're using, what sort of basin you're using, and then what sort of piping system so uh, this will always be available inside your building you actually don't have to mention it because all of this will be available but you need to identify what sort of system so the first thing that, which is important you need to explain is this sing single stack system or it's a one pipe system or it's a two pipe system so this is one of the most important thing that you need to mention in your sanitary and sewage system. So you have different building and different building requires different piping system. So you can go through the info here. This will be for your residential and then this will be for maybe a bigger building and then this for a large building which require a bigger uh, separate sanitary appliances where the WC and the basin to be put separately apart lah, where this one can be some sort of like an office lah. okay so this is important lah to mention in your assignment then the comparison will be available here and then here will be your images so you do not have to mention the uh, system outside of your building because I mentioned in your I put the information that you only require to mention the inner internal building building services so this is external building services you don't have to mention how is the wastewater being is being connected to the outside piping where it will be directed to the sewage treatment plant so this you don't have to mention lah. And then this will be available lah in your uh, this will always be available in the building services also lah. so you have your sanitary appliances you also need to have this to ensure that they are functioning properly so basically there will be a lot of information that you can extract from your lecture slides to put into your assignment so this all the different different type of traps and then that's it lah for your internal, for your building. So coming on to your external sewage treatment, so this is where the 
collection part and then uh, this is where the treatment part is done lah. so you want to have our collection in the building and then as all of this flow out and through a piping system they will reach the sewage treatment plant so in malaysia as mentioned previous lesson we are a tropical country so we have a very very high amount of rain water so because we have a very very high amount of rain water we will have a separate drainage so there will be a separate drainage to deal with all this storm water piping which will be diverted into the river if you can see here so storm water should never flow into the sewage piping system so this is because if you were to include storm water into the into the sewage piping system then you'll be actually overloading the sewage treatment plant which is not good lah so sewage treatment plant is built is designed in such a way that they are there to just accommodate a certain amount of flow or a quantity amount of flow per person so it's done is designed to treat a certain pe which is per population equivalent of waste so it's not deal with it's not equipped to deal with the storm water lah. it's only able to deal with a certain amount of waste so if you were to include the storm water into the sewage treatment plant then all this storm water will have to go through the process of the treatment which will be wasting the design flow lah of the treatment plant okay so going on to this so okay this is the information that like i just informed you just now so here sewage treatment plant is used to treat the sewage and then once this is treated the second process it will be discharged into the river so treated sewage will be clean but it won't be clean enough to drink lah. so you will just discharge it back into the river so in malaysia we don't really treat sewage treatment plant until it's very clean until we are fit for consumption so we will just treat it fit for disposal back into the environment but in singapore if you have follow the news singapore because they don't have a very very big land so they actually built a sewage treatment plant that can treat the water until it is good enough to drink lah. so you can search it out on the internet where they have such a good technology that they can actually treat waste water until you uh, until you can drink it okay so a uh, sewage treatment plant has a very very com uh, has a lot of piping connecting them from residential or commercial building to the sewage treatment plant so there's actually a network of piping from our house to the sewage treatment plant so there's a requirement on how this sewage pipe can be installed so there's up to a few requirements so layout should be simple direct with band and manhole kept to the minimum and then you have pipe to be laid in a straight point in a straight line from point to point part of the sewage, uh, sewage system to be accessible for inspection and cleaning and then pipe to be laid to a self-cleaning gradient this means the pipe has to be in a, a slanting to be installed in a slanting method so if you read through all this requirement so it's say, setting that the way we install pipe need to be very direct so we cannot have a lot of bend with this piping so it needs it shouldn't be complex because we the way we have our building is already very very complex so we shouldn't make the piping system more complex as opposed to the number of houses we have on top so all the layout should be very very direct it should be straight and then a few things here it should be deep enough that 
nobody accidentally dig it up, which is at least 900 mm below the road or 600 mm below the field or garden. So this is to ensure that nobody like us personally, our commoner or uh, civilian, residential uh, resident, we do not accidentally excavate it and damage it. And then we have this, which is we do not want to have a pipe passing through the building. So this is because if there's any problem, we will not be able to service the pipe. And then next is the pipe must not be near any tree because this pipe, uh, this sewage pipe is carrying wastewater, which is actually full of, which is actually full of some sort of like a fertilizer. Lah. So if you have a pipe very near the tree, then the tree itself, the roots, they will try to uh, break through into the pipe lah, to get the goods. So pipe, there's a few requirements to, for the installation of pipe. It needs to be simple. It needs to be deep enough and it needs to be in an inclination. So there needs to be some sort of inclination so that the pipe can flow by itself through gravity method and also clean itself. And then deep enough, it must not pass through any building. So installation of piping for your sewage must not be underneath a building. This way you will be able to do any services to it. Lah. If you are passing it through a building, you will not be able to do any services to it. And then it should not be near any tree because the root will want to get the fertilizer inside this piping, which is the wastewater. Then we have our material of our pipe. So it must be non absorbent durable, smooth in ball and adequate strain. So this is a requirement lah by usually IWK. So if you do not use the required material, usually IWK will not allow you to pass. Lah. So you have to use the correct material for it. <coughs> and then finally, where possible, flexible joint are to be used. So this flexible joint is because we want to have a Okay, so this flexible joint is because of the impact of water, the flow of water. So when water is flowing, if you were to have a very direct bend, if you were, uh, if you were to have a very direct bend and there's impact of water, so the pipe will actually dislocate due to the impact of the wastewater if you were to have bends. So that's why it mentions that flexible joint needs to be used so that in the case where the water is impacting a bend, then the joint will have a certain degree of movement to reduce this impact. So that's why a flexible joint, where possible, you want to use a flexible joint instead of a rigid joint. So if you're using a rigid joint, which means there's no degree of movement from up, left, right or down, when you're dealing with movement of water, fluid dynamic, then you will, the pipe will actually be damaged because most of the material that we have, if you were to do it rigid where we use screw, then the material itself will degrade over time. So if you were to do a flexible joint where the impact of water can be reduced through the movement of the joint for the piping, then the lifespan of this piping will last even longer as opposed to a rigid joint. So this is the idea behind why flexible joint if it's possible when you are dealing with water, we will want to use it. Lah. Because sewage piping, we are installing it underground. So if there's any problem, then it will be very costly to go and replace or repair the piping. Lah. So usually you will see that to if there's any problem occurring with the sewage piping, then they will have to do the work at night. They will have to block out the road at night and then they will have to dig up or either open up the manhole, inspect it, check if there's any problem with the piping and then rectify the problem. So it's actually very troublesome to do that. 
that's why when we are laying the pipe there's a lot of requirement here so that when we do it right once you want to do it only once ah, because you don't want to dig up again and then build a new, another new pipe again so there's actually two methods in which we do sewage piping lah. so this is not in your exam so this is based on what i did before lah, because i actually previously worked for uh, building a sewage treatment plant so this is just additional information for you guys lah. so there's two way one way is we dig up the land and then we just lay down the pipe so this is a very direct way another one is through pipe jacking so uh pipe jacking so a uh, pipe jacking is using a machine lah, where we push up the pipe from a point to another point uh i will explain that in detail after i finish off the slide first okay so let me have a seat okay so uh if you're just to answer your question quickly if your assignment if you have chosen a residential type you can still explain on the system so your system should be a single stack system if you are picking a residential unit there's no point for you to pick a one pipe system or a two or dual pipe system because this is actually for bigger building so you can read through the requirement uh, the explanation here for your assignment you are to actually recommend which system you should be picking so in a residential this is the best system to pick lah, because you do not need very high quantity of discharge you only have a few inlet of discharge because of the because you don't have a very high occupancy of the resident in the building so you are for resident building you're only using single stack system if you were to use a one pipe system it's still acceptable but it is not the correct choice to pick this sort of system because you're actually wasting money so the idea behind giving the assignment to you guys is for you guys to think which sort of system to pick either a single stack system or a one pipe system or dual pipe system based on what sort of building you have chosen so definitely you will not be able to view what sort of system that will be installed in your chosen building of choice so even in your house you will not know what sort of system that is installed but based on the information you have read if you give it a bit of thought because everything requires money you want to choose the cheapest system which is the least amount of piping installation so if you have a house you always want to choose this instead of you always want to choose the single stack system instead of a dual pipe system because of the piping so less piping equals less material cost equals to less installation labor cost so no point installing a dual pipe system if you're not going to fully utilize it in a residential building okay okay so coming back to this i will later when we have a bit more time after we gone through the after we gone through the assignment and after i finish this assignment then i will maybe show you a few pictures ah, of how a sewer treatment plant will be like since i did some work and the photo is still with me okay so we have our common sewage material this is for our piping so we have a very fit clay a bit refined clay and then we have our steel pipe cast iron concrete pipe asbestos cement and then plastic so there's a variety of material which can be used as a piping for uh, as a piping material for sewage material so usually uh, steel piping is what you will find in a sewage treatment plant to transport the to transport the wastewater from a section of the tank to another section 
and then cast iron you can use steel pipe cast iron this will usually be in the sewage treatment plant and then when we are dealing with uh when we are dealing with the external sewage piping system for your wastewater you usually use concrete pipe or clay or cement so this material is definitely <coughs> cheaper than piping lah. so that's why we'll be usually using clay concrete pipe or asbestos cement to do our external piping because the external piping need to handle a very uh, long distance and large and bigger diameter so we want to use a cheaper material but then depending on where the location of your piping is you want you might want to uh, not choose uh, asbestos cement uh, because this is susceptible to sulfuric acid so it's not safe to use when you have when the ground contains sulfuric acid <coughs> okay so most of the choices of our material piping material the selection is actually based on costing uh. so inside the sewage treatment plant we will use steel and cast iron and also plastic because they are cheaper to install lah in a small area which is a sewage treatment plant but when you look at the big picture where there's a very big connection of piping from uh, which is a collection of pipe waste material from our, your building transporting it all the way to the sewage treatment plant so because we want to save money we don't use it we don't use cast iron pipe or steel pipe we don't use plastic pipe also because it's not as strong as other material so you we'll use you we'll always try to use concrete piping for or the this clay lah for the connection to transport the waste material from your building to the sewage treatment plant okay so this is a common material lah to transport your waste from your building to the sewage treatment plant okay so next we will have our sewage manhole so there's actually two types the first is a brickwork and then the second is the RC or precast so usually you won't uh usually a manhole is a uh, access uh, an entry uh, into the sewage treatment piping system to for inspection and removal of debris so uh brick manhole is usually for a very less depth uh, a very less uh, very shallow depth of piping uh. so it's a smaller version of manhole but when we go towards a uh, very very deep manhole let's say for more than six to seven meter then you will always be a rc or cast in situ manhole so why do we use this is because brick is not strong so brick manhole is only for less than one meter and then for that more than that we always want to use RC because concrete is always stronger than brick. So brick is just something, uh, this brick manhole can be done with just digging up the hole and then laying the brick around, all, all around the manhole, all around the hole to form your manhole. So this manhole serves as a service point to inspect and remove debris from the system. So usually you want to put it at a joint area lah, where there's multiple of pipe or as a service area where after a certain amount of length of the piping you want to install another manhole so this is because if you have any clock or any uh, damages you'll be able to easily access and try to repair the piping so there is two area in which the manhole can be installed the first is the joint 
uh, the pipe joining area where you have uh, some sort of like a uh, D. And then another one requirement for manhole installation is for when there's a very, very long distance of piping. So you want to have service point or inspection point for that. So this is the different, different component of how this RC manhole is made up of. And then this is a picture of a RC manhole. So here, I think they are lowering uh, equipment to check and maybe wash the manhole. Okay, so that's about it for the external. So then we come towards the sewage treatment plant. So the aim of this sewage treatment plant is to collect the waste from the building and then convert this waste into something that is not harmful and dispose of the material safely. So sewage treatment, there's three process, which is a primary, secondary, and tertiary. So this process is actually very similar to your water treatment plant. So it's to process the water. Lah. So the first process is to ensure that there's no solid waste. And then the second process is to reduce all the protein and carbohydrate, which is the fecal matter in the waste water. So the bacteria inside will be eating up all the waste material, which is some sort of like fertilizer lah, in the waste water. And then finally, before you dispose of the waste water, after the bacteria uh, clean up the protein and carbohydrate in the waste. So you are actually to remove the bacteria from the water before you discharge it into the river. So there's three process into this. As we, as I intro you the info, the comic strip. So raw waste water is actually uh, received at a very, very low point from the ground because our collection from our house will be at ground level. So for the sewage treatment plant to receive this raw wastewater, it will actually be at the lowest gradient. So it will be at the lowest gradient. So let's say this is our ground level. So the pipe will come from the collection of a system of piping from your house or from a commercial building in a sloping matter and you'll be at a very, very low uh, depth. If it will be at a very, very deep depth, lah, usually it can be up to 10 meter when it comes, when it reaches the sewage treatment plant. So first off, you'll always have a pumping station. So there will be a couple pump to actually pump up this sewage water because we are receiving it at a very low depth. So you, you will receive the, in a sewage treatment plant, you will first receive the wastewater through a pumping station to pump it up to a high level above ground to a grid chamber. So this grid chamber is where the primary treatment will be done first. So the primary treatment here, grid chamber, will remove any material. So you remove any solid matter and then we will go to the second part, which is the primary settling. So this is actually the secondary treatment. Oh uh, no, sorry. This is actually the first treatment in which the material is separated. So you want to let all the waste material settle down the solid. And then you have a layer of sludge at the bottom which will be transported to a sludge digestion. And then here, the grid chamber first off is to remove any solid material. So here the primary settler is to separate the solid with the sludge. So with the heavy material, if you were to have a mud water, 
if you were to just put the water on a glass of uh you, if you just leave the water alone then naturally the material itself inside the water will slowly settle down so we will be able to remove most of the suspended organic material in the wastewater as large to another uh, to another building which is a sludge digestion area with the sludge removed then we will still have dirty water which can be treated in the secondary treatment which is a biological treatment so the biological treatment is done through introducing oxygen to the bacteria to eat up all this waste water matter which is suspended in the water and cannot be uh, it cannot settle lah. so once we do that we will try to have another final settling of any material so there will be a return of this sludge back into the biological treatment to ensure that no waste is being uh, no waste is being discharged uh, out into the disinfection area so this process is the bacteria uh, is a secondary treatment where bacteria is introduced into the wastewater and to eat up all the waste inside the water so if there's still any sludge then we want to direct it out into the solid treatment area uh. so once the water is treated to be clean enough it will be passed on to the third treatment which is the contact basin so here the water will be treated to kill off any bacteria inside this wastewater and when and then it will be clean enough to be discharged back to the river lah, or drainage so this one is uh, optional uh, in plant water pumping station usually when you are doing a sewage treatment plant at this point because there will be a pumping station at the beginning this is at this point is where you want to have your pump to pump up all the waste to a highest point and then you want to have your end result the water uh, the discharge towards the drainage or the rip river to be at the lowest point so the idea behind why you want to have your pump pumping up your wastewater to a very high point and this to a very low point is if you relate it back to your topic three which is your you know so sorry so relate it back to topic four which is your wastewater so we learned that there's three methods to transport water to residential which is via gravity or combination of gravity and pump or pump so you always want to select you always want to make use of the gravity method of how water flows because using gravity this is available free for all so you don't have to do any maintenance on it if you design the treatment method in a very good way then you will not be you will not have to deal with the problem associated with the pump and since gravity is free and available all the time so once you design a very good system in which from the primary treatment your wastewater is able to flow down from sec primary to secondary to tertiary and then out in a very nice gradient of flow then the this treatment plant will be very cheap to operate which everyone will like it lah so you make it that you don't need a lot of pump to pump from a to b and then b to c c to d it will cost a lot of money so the process of flow of this wastewater from primary to out to discharge effluent have to be via gravity so this is the cheapest way because we do not want to spend a lot of money to maintain the plant so you only want to have a single pump here 
and then as you move out all of these are via gravity in a gradient from highest point here to the lowest point here so this is the idea behind how a sewage treatment plant will be designed and then this is the first part is for wastewater so with wastewater you will have a sludge or a so-called cake lah, here so all this sludge when it's being transported to a sludge digestion area usually this is a drying bed lah, where all the sludge is being transported to here and then they will have to undergo a process in which the water will be removed from this sludge so once the water has been removed from this sludge they will become a cake so this is a term lah, for a dry sludge they will become a cake and then this cake can actually be brought uh, it can actually be bring for fertilization in a farm or usually as a biofuel you can use it to incinerate it and get electrical energy out of it so we will try not to waste any process that we have if not if we are unable to use it for incineration as a biofuel we can always uh, dispose of it lah in a landfill so this is uh, basically how the process goes lah we have your primary which is to filter up the wastewater first and then we have our se primary settler which is to separate the suspended solid with the wastewater and then at the second uh, second part secondary treatment this is where we treat the wastewater and then finally the third treatment we have to remove the bacteria from it and discharge it into the river so these three treatment stages is a very uh, very summarized uh, summarized stages of how the wastewater is being treated so this picture will represent, uh, will represent uh, how the uh, will represent an even more detailed process of how wastewater is being processed and then this is the detailed information lah, which you can go through later so primarily it's all about removal of debris solid from the wastewater and then secondary is about uh, breaking down the wastewater into normal water then from the from there on the tertiary is very simple lah, standard lah. so usually you can use chlorine or maybe uv light to remove the harmful bacteria but depending on the requirement uh de depending on the requirement so it will be what it can be a coordination chamber lah, where chlorine is put into the into into that chamber to destroy the bacteria so this the theory treatment is not mentioned lah, so maybe i will put in next time lah. okay so there's a variety of method on how what which sort of system that can be chosen to treat the sewage so the first is the anaerobic which is not using oxygen and then the second is the aerobic which use oxygen to treat the wastewater so there's three type of uh three example available so this is for the treatment that does not require oxygen lah. so the first is a septic tank so this isn't really a treatment method lah. it's more of a storage method so Septic tank is what we will have during the olden days where we still don't have the concept of absorbing the uh, we still don't have the concept of treating the wastewater. So we have a very big tank installed, which is this a septic tank. We can be installed underneath uh, uh, near the building where all the wastewater can be flowed into here. So this is during the 
I think thirties lah at village lah where we don't have a piping uh we don't have a systematic piping system where the wastewater can be flowed into a treatment plant. So during the old days, every house is equipped with their own septic tank. So this septic tank is uh designed to last to accommodate at least 10 years of usage ah. so when this septic tank is full usually you have to give the disposal or the local authority a call ah, to tell them to remove your waste water so this is how it's like ah, 20 to 30 years ago then now we don't have this sort of system anymore ah, in place so all the system all the sewage system in the city now has piping so as i said before the house that you're paying for in the future is not only that building on the ground you're actually paying for the road around the building and also the piping system okay so the next is the cesspool so this cesspool is actually uh banned lah, but just for you guys to know is some sort of like this there's two types one is like this where you have brick in inside uh you have you dig a hole you have a barrel like brick laying here so this is outright band ready lah. and then you have your sanitary waste going into this brick here so waste fluid will be contained here and then you have your solid waste uh, settled into the bottom so the idea behind having this hole is so that the waste fluid can be removed through the process of filtration in the ground so the ground is a very good uh, it's a very good filtration system but as our population increase more and more so because this is allowing the waste liquid fluid to filter out into the surrounding soil we are actually polluting the surrounding soil so that's why this method is already outright uh, banned lah. another method is this so this is also a cesspool a different type of cesspool so it's just a simply a tank which is able to hold sludge some sort of like the septic tank lah. so there's actually two type of cesspool and then finally, we have our in half tank. Okay, so this in half tank is actually what is available in the sewage treatment plant. So the first part, A and B, <coughs> which is a septic tank and the cesspool. So this is what you find located near to your house. And then for your in half tank, this is what you will find in the sewage treatment plant. Ah. So the in hop tank is this. So it does not require oxygen, meaning as I mentioned before, the bacteria, you are not providing the bacteria with oxygen using uh using a uh, okay, this there's no picture here. Using uh a mechanical arm to disturb the surface or even putting a uh, appliances to pump in oxygen so because this is an in-house tank you do not do that <coughs> so here the this in-house tank you are just allowing the raw sewage to come in to this tank and it, uh, as the raw sewage tank uh, raw sewage water move from inlet to outlet they will actually slowly settle down into this tank below so via process of filtration and then uh, sedimentation the raw sewage will drop down into the bottom and then you will want to only allow wastewater to pass from A to B and then to another tank where the wastewater will be contained to break down the carbohydrate and protein in the water itself so this is what you will find available in sewage treatment plant but this method is also 
uh, is, a, is also already phased out. Lah. This is a 30 years old technology. Lah. So now with our improved technology and knowledge and new system, we don't actually use this sort of system anymore. So it's more efficient to introduce oxygen into your sewer treatment plant. So by introducing oxygen, you're actually speeding up the process. So by speeding up the process, you actually do not require, uh, it's actually this sewer treatment plant will actually become a more efficient plant in treating waste as opposed to using this old method of in half tank. So there are two methods. One is a fixed film growth system, which is this, and another is a suspended growth system. So in a fixed film growth system, we actually have a film, different, different film in which you can try to, in which the film will try to grow the bacteria and uh, break down the bacteria and break down the protein and carbohydrate in the wastewater. And then next we have our suspended growth system. So here, the wastewater will be channeled into this big area basin and then oxygen will be introduced via this vent. So this vent will pump the oxygen into the system and then because the wastewater is being filled with a lot of oxygen, so the bacteria in this wastewater will be very active in reproduction. Lah. So they will eat all the protein and carbohydrate in the wastewater and reproduce and break down all this waste in the water. So it's called a suspended growth system lah, for this. So I never personally saw this fixed film growth system because uh, system before because it requires a film and then because it is a film so after a certain amount of usage let's say maybe three to five years then the film needs to be replaced lah. so I don't really personally see this system before lah. usually you have this suspended growth system so you are just installing a air vent and you are pumping oxygen into this tank. So this is a more favorable system. Lah. Then we have our, this, this is a term. So a return activated sludge is a sludge from the second clarifier, which is age, stress and return to the aeration bin. So this sludge is actually very efficient in digesting organic material in the aeration basin. So we want to try to keep the good bacteria in this and also some other places ah, to ensure that the microorganism is still remaining in the system to break down all the waste water. So there's actually a lot of different type of name for the system involved in sewage treatment. So this will not be tested, lah. it's for your knowledge the different different type of system. You don't need to mention this different different type of system. You just need to know the process, the general process of how waste is being uh, waste is being treated to become clean water. And also you'll be able to identify what sort of tank you'll be like, but you won't be tested on what sort of uh, structure there is in the sewage treatment plant. Lah. But you need to know what is written here. Lah. So this is a picture to show you. This is a clarifier and then an aeration basin. And then you have a process of how uh, how this treatment plant is being is treating the waste. <coughs> Okay, so we have a septic tank. So this is for the for a reason where area cannot be connected to the sewage treatment plant. You have our septic tank lah. So there's a variety of volume for this tank. 
So during the olden days or at construction site, this is where you can find your septic tank. So septic tank is for places where you cannot service it. So for example, this is a this can be your septic tank. They can they can be a variety of tank lah. So it's not just this shape. They can be a round tank with a single opening. That is also considered a septic tank. <coughs> so the idea behind a septic tank can be either to store the wastewater or it can use as an intermediate to serve as a treatment process for this building. So in this case, if you were to design it in a very, very, in, instead of a, only a storage space, like the previous, where we just have a inlet into this and there's no outlet, we can actually design it in such a way that this sewage, uh, this septic tank can treat a certain amount of waste. <clears throat> so liquid can be uh, can be allowed into this septic tank and then you can allow the sludge to settle down and the scum to allow it to flow up to the, uh, to the top of the water. So we have this partition and this low uh, level of different level of inlet and outlet. So with this partition or buffer to the uh, to the top of the water, you will actually be able to stop the scum, which is the suspended uh, matter from exiting your septic tank. So this is to ensure that you are not actually polluting the environment. Lah. So an uh, overview will be here. So the house will be discharging the wastewater. You'll be entering the septic tank. So the wastewater, through the process of time, the wastewater will slowly settle down and form a slush for the heavy matter. And then the scum will be suspended above. Then we'll have our, all the liquid in between this scum and slush. So is with this is this liquid that we want to it to be discharged from your system so you want to have a buffer this is to block the scum from flowing out through the outlet and then when it flow out through the outlet you will have the soil absorb it and purify it through the different different layer of soil so that it doesn't affect the stream or lake lah. so if possible, we do not want to have this lah, because the possibility to pollute the environment is very, very high if this system fails. And this system can fail very, very easily. Lah. So there's a advantages to disadvantages to this septic tank. So they are able to treat low volume of sewage and require low construction and maintenance costs, but they are not suited suitable to high volume of sewage or and also low efficiency in sewage treatment. So what it means by low efficiency means that it's not able to treat sewage properly. So it actually requires a very, very long time to treat it. And these two comes together lah, because this is a tank. <clears throat> if you were to have a very high volume of outflow of your waste, your waste water in this tank will not have time to settle down. So if it does not have time to settle down, which means water is being continuously pumped into this septic tank, <coughs> then it will not have time to separate itself from, uh, it will not have time to separate into three matter, which is the scum, liquid and sludge. So imagine the, the wastewater is being pumped continuously into this septic tank. Everything will be mixed together. So when everything is mixed together and the water level has already reached the output, so it will just flow out from in here. Everything is still mixing together. It will just flow out and you will actually contaminate the soil surrounding. So that's why if it's possible, we do not want to have a septic tank. Lah. Because if there's a very high 
input of your wastewater. Everything will be mixed together in your septic tank and you will just in from here and out to here, to the environment. So you will pollute your groundwater. If you are using a well to get your water, so you will actually be taking some of the protein from this wastewater lah with you through your through drinking. Okay, so next we want to have a you want to have sewage pumping also. So uh usually you not want to have sewage pumping lah from your house to the sewer. You want to have piping installed in a gradient where you don't require this pumping. <clears throat> but sometimes due to it being uh, due to it being in a condition where there's no choice, then we still need to pump our sewage to the sewage treatment plant. So there's a few requirements in which we need to fulfill, lah, which is reliability, unchockable, robust, wear resistant, accessibility for maintenance. So this is a few requirements for sewage pumping. Lah. If we are unable to uh, we are unable to have a nice gradient of piping to the sewage treatment plant. So an example of this is when the sewage treatment plant is actually higher than your residential. <clears throat> so the idea behind uh, a pump, the idea behind using a pump is that we only need to provide at least two units of pump. So one for working, another one for standby. So the best is you have another one more last set lah for standby also. So this is because if you have one of the pump uh, jam or not working, you always have another one as a backup to pump your sewage. So if both of them fail, then you should have another one lah. But if all of them fail, then you won't be able to flush your waste down your house or the the or you will have a backflow of your waste, lah, which is not good. Lah. So each unit must be able to handle the excess flow, which means you want to make it you want to install a pump which is able to handle more than what you have re required. So this is to ensure that you do not overwork the pump. Okay, so finally, you can you want to discharge off the sewage treatment, lah, the waste you have treated into, into river, into lake, or into sea. Lah. So once this is uh, once the wastewater is treated in a sewage treatment plant, so you can actually just uh, put it into lake, sea, or river. Lah. So you can put it in a broad irrigation in a big deep field, or you can dilute it into river or sea. So we will treat it and then we will dump it back into the sea. So broad irrigation treatment included the scheme in uh, screening, skimming, and plain settling. So irrigation in which sewage is first liquefied before being discharged to an irrigation field, and then you can discharge it into the river or stream. So the sewage have to be first purified before discharging into the water course or river, and then the conservation. So in which sewage is discharged into cesspool or septic tank and periodically removed or is treated in a chemical or earth closet and then dilution. So a lot of this method is not allowed. Lah. So there is different different way of sewage disposal. <clears throat> so usually you will not want to dump your raw sewage into a broad irrigation which means this is for farming. Lah. Usually you do not want that. Usually the you want to treat the sewage 
and get the byproduct of the cake to use as fertilization. So you do not want to just dump the sewage into a field or maybe the into the sea. <coughs> so this is all a health hazard lah, and also endangering the environment. So usually you only have part two, which is the sewage first being purified and discharged into water or river. Okay, so uh, I think it's been long enough. Uh, let has let's have a fifteen minute break lah. So we come back at nine thirty, and then I'll finish off with this calculation. Okay.